Hello modelers and welcome to 72 Carat Car Classics. Today I'm going to be building the Honda NSX. It's a Tamiya kit 124 scale, um, beautifully made and very detailed for its price. Come along and follow me on this build. First cut off all the parts from the sprue. Uh, I like to do this basically so that I get all the sanding out of the way in one go. Be really careful cutting the uh, clear parts because if you get too close to the part you can actually crack or shatter the, the plastic and there's no way out of that one. Once you've sanded all your parts, then you need to wash them with soap and water. Ordinary detergent will do. You also need to find a container of some kind, uh, just to keep them dust free until you're either ready to paint or spray. If you want more realistic looking rear light clusters, um, take the measurement from the indicator to the reverse light. I think in this case it was 15 millimeters. Divide that by three because there was three light clusters in between them and then mark it out with a pencil. When you've done that on both sides, you've had a look at it and you're happy, um, then you can get dremeling. Take your time during this process because the plastic here is quite thin. So if you push too hard or go too heavy, you can actually blow right through the plastic and make yourself a hole. So take your time, uh, periodically go back and check and see how deep you're going and until you're done. I used a pencil here just to mark out where the bulbs will go. Um, I did this just so that I didn't start drilling and then make some silly mistakes. Once you've finished with your Dremel, you'll find that the plastic sometimes gets a bit chewed up. Um, smooth this out with some 600 grit sandpaper. To make your light bulbs, basically take a piece of the sprue from the model's kit and then you can light it and as you can see here I'm stretching it. Um, it's going to be hit and miss in terms of how thick it needs to be to go in the holes you've made. Um, but trial and error, making it thicker or thinner, uh, and you'll get there in the end. If you like what you're seeing so far, please like and subscribe. All these things are really going to help to build my channel, which is relatively new. Glue all the parts together that you know are going to be the same colour. This will save you having to individually paint each one before you construct it. The alloys that come with this kit are actually slightly chrome, which isn't real or authentic to the real car. So what I did is I just put Masco on the actual um, wheel nuts because those are chrome. And then I went and sprayed it uh, flat aluminium and I went over it with a layer of clear. And then after I, that, that had dried, then I just took off the Masco that was on the nuts and then I had my chrome nuts with uh, aluminium alloy.
I use the same method that I use to make my rear light bulbs to make my tire valves. Um, again, stretching the sprue uh, to a certain thickness. And I also put a pilot hole in the actual alloy so that there was something for it to bond to because if you try and glue that straight to the alloy without doing that it would just pop off so make a hole um, deep enough for it to sit in and then you'll find that it won't just fall out I use panel line accent color just to highlight my exhaust. You can also use this for your chassis parts and your engine parts as well. Once I've finished all my spraying, then I remove all the masking tape. It always seems to be one piece or two that gets a bit of overspray where I wasn't expecting it or I chip off a bit of paint here and there. For me, there's no major panic. I just get a brush, get the color that I was using and then just touch up the bits that are defected. I'm going to remove the indicators, not because it's a left-hand drive car, it's actually going to be right-hand drive, but I just don't like painting over um, plastic where you can't get that clear look like an indicator lens. So I'm going to try something new here. I'm going to get a piece of clear plastic sprue and then I'm going to dremel that down to the same size. Uh, it's going to look messy, but I think once you sand it with some uh, fine grit sandpaper and you get finer and finer, then you start to get the clear look and not this cloudy look that I have at the moment. I'll come back to this later in the video though. I use my own color here using Extreme Metal AK478. Uh, it's white aluminium. I mix that with some metallic gray and a couple of drops of gold. I can't give you the ratios because I was literally eyeballing it, but it turned out to be a really nice color in the flesh. I use some mirrored plastic here just to make the reflectors. I always like to make them as realistic as possible. Lots of cars have them, um, but this is one way to emulate it. I thinned out some clear red for the reverse lights. If you look at the actual model, they're not actually silver. Um, but it's got a tinge of red to it, so that's one way of doing it so that you can still see the silver through the red. You can use old sprue again to make seatbelt fasteners. I 
I cut a piece of clear plastic to make a realistic badge emblem. Um, the Honda badge or the Honda decal that comes with the with the kit sits pretty flat on the kit. Um, if you look at the real thing, it is actually raised off the bonnet. So I made that and I stuck the emblem on top of the plastic and then I went round with a coat of silver. It actually came out looking rather nice. I cut the same piece of plastic that I used for my emblem um, to use for the dials on, on the dashboard. Uh, as you know, every car comes with um, plastic uh, covering the dials so that you can't damage them. I tried to emulate this, to be honest with you, it didn't really work as well as I wanted it to. Didn't look great, but I left it anyway. Don't forget to smash that like button and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. I decided to spray the black parts first because uh, there wasn't as much of it and also it's probably easier to mask in my case and you use less masking tape. Um, once I masked it all up then I went over with the silver and as you can see now removing the tape um, everything is the way it should be. I had an idea to use um, some fine sawdust that I got from my sander after doing a DIY project. I thought it might work well as flocking and it actually really did. Um, so what I did is I sprayed the colour that I was going to have the carpet, in this case it was going to be grey. Sprayed it grey and then lay down um, a layer of sawdust, um, tapped it out like you would normal flocking and then looked at the, the layer and how thick it was. You can always reapply it as many times as you want, but just do the same process, so spray it and then lay your sawdust. And it ended up looking pretty good. If you want your wheels to rotate, uh, don't do what I did. I actually glued those little poly things that go inside the drum. Um, not on all of them, just on one or two of them, but it, it does freeze up the wheels where you can't rotate them freely.
Just a quick caution for anybody that does want to build this kit in the future. There are a couple of weak spots on this car um, when you're handling the body. The A pillars at the front and um, the bar at the back in the engine bay are very, very thin. I managed to break both of them. Um, one A pillar on the left uh, near side and also the bar at the back in the engine bay. Um, I managed to patch them together as best I could, but if you are going to make it, make sure that you're handling it uh, with care. Once I finished with all the accent colour on the doors and the and all the uh, trimming, then I went over it with 3000 grit sandpaper. I wasn't completely happy with the finish of the model, it didn't have that shine. Silver is a really hard colour to get um, a good look on, but I just went over it with that. I use the same mirrored plastic that I use for my reflectors on the rear to use them for my indicators on the front and also the fog lights below. I masked up the body here just to get it ready to do the black roof that is pretty standard on most uh, NSX models. When I was masking it up I made sure that I did everything that needed to be black. The front and rear needed to be semi-gloss black while the roof was going to be gloss black. So I did the semi-gloss black first and then masked up the uh, part on the rear engine bay and then did the roof gloss black afterwards. I don't know why I'm showing all this footage of uh, me making the headlights because in the end I had to glue them shut or should I say they wouldn't really open freely um, so I just kept them down. What happens is you paint your model um, and you get layers and layers and they build up and then when they build up to such a degree uh, when you go to put and fit your headlights in they actually don't fit so I literally had to, to squeeze them in. Um, but in doing so, I knew that I couldn't keep opening and closing them, so I just went for the um, lights down look. This is the mirrored plastic that I used to make my rear reflectors and also the indicators and the fog lights. I'm using it here now to do the side or the door mirrors.
I polish my roof with uh, Tamiya products, Tamiya's um, coarse, fine and finish um, compounds. Unfortunately, <laughs> I went a little bit too heavy and uh, as there's slight ridges on the roof, you can see at the rear there and on the front and sides, um, I went a bit too heavy and I don't think I put a thick enough layer of paint on there, so I blew through the paint. I use the fine and finished compounds to take out any minor scratches that are left in the clear parts. This was my mistake, I shouldn't have cut those off early and mixed them in with the other parts because they ended up getting scratched. I'm using gloss black here with um, some thinners to thin it down just to go over those blemishes that I made in polishing too hard. This is the point right here where I should have just stopped with this decal. One of those frustrating moments. I was using water and in some circumstances I used microsole and set. And I used microsole in this case and it just disintegrated the decal. So I was trying to flatten it out and it ripped. Um, so I had to get a pair of tweezers. I was trying to straighten it out but it was um, too far gone and didn't come up looking good. So what I had to do is my solution was to get some clear blue and just touch up that part in the middle that was uh, clear. And actually, once I did that, it didn't look so bad. Um, and I had a dark interior as well, so it didn't look so bad looking in once I put the, the glass in. Back to my clear indicator lenses. So I kind of went for a rectangular shape, um, just going at it at four sides and then rounding off the top. Um, after I'd done that, I got some 600 grit sandpaper and I did the same thing four ways and did the top and just rounded it until I was happy. Um, once I'd done that, I could then go in with um, the polish and I used, um, I, d I think I used coarse, I might have used uh, fine and then the finish and then once I'd done that I cut it and eyeballed it to how thick I think it needed to be to go on the car and then once I did that I just literally painted it with clear orange and then after that um, I did the backing silver because I wanted to go around the edge with some flat black 
just to make it look like it had a beading going around the light bulb. Um, but I thought if I did the flat black first, it would go, it would bleed in or it would go onto the back and not have that sort of um, silver backing that you would have on a regular indicator lens. These exhausts were um, gloss black and I just went over it with Alclad uh, Chrome and then touched in the part uh, in the rear that was flat black again. to make an aerial for this car because um, on the real model they have one in the back uh, left corner so I started off with a really small pilot hole um, just so that I could then go on to a larger size drill and then a larger one until I was happy with the size uh, to be realistic to the real model then I got a piece of sprue um, instead of stretching it uh, quite quickly as you saw earlier in the video this time I'm stretching it really slowly that way the plastic kind of uh, stays together and you've got a thicker uh, tube uh, which is more suitable to go in for my aerial this time. So there you have it, the NSX is finally done. It took me a while, um, this is the first time I've actually made a video, a build video, where I've had to edit it and, and do the whole process of building it. I have enjoyed it, uh, it is something I want to do some more. Um, if you like this video, please like it and uh, subscribe. This will really help me to know if it's something that I can continue, if it's something that people are interested in. So yeah, if you do have an interest in what I'm doing here, uh, please subscribe and I look forward to catching you up on the next one.
They say there's no such thing as a perfect model. Well, this is perfect enough for me. Um, yeah, there were a couple of mistakes that happened. The A pillars, the, the bar at the back, um, even the paint job on the roof. But I enjoyed the build. Um, it was something that I've learned from. And hopefully next time, um, all those mistakes that I might have made in this build, I can think about for the next one so that I avoid making them. Um, but modeling is all about that, right? You can't just expect to be really good. And um, this is something that I did as a, as a young kid. And now I'm picking it up again as an adult. And um, yeah, looking to improve with each build that I do. I've got about 260, 270 models that I've got in my loft that need to be built. Um, I don't know if I'll get through all of them. I might have to sell a few, but I'd like to uh, make some videos and put them out there on YouTube so that you can uh, appreciate and uh, you know enjoy them being enjoy them being made.